Welcome back to the One and O podcast brought to you by Penn State Student Affairs. I'm Seth Engel. And I'm Zach Allen. And we're here after a pretty crazy week of Penn State football coverage. Um, it didn't end with that Michigan loss. That only that started uh, what would be a very complicated week uh, beginning Sunday with Mike Yersich's firing as Penn State's offensive coordinator. He was the fifth offensive coordinator of James Franklin's tenure. Now it's going to open the floor for someone else to come in, and um, next year is his 10th season, so this is big. Um, Zach, you know, immediate reactions to that. I know it was a few days ago, but how are you feeling about Penn State's situation right now? Yeah, I think my immediate reaction, maybe with a lot of other people, was just it, he's, he's the first one to be fired midseason. Um, I, I think, you know, people might have predicted – him not being with the program next season but that occurring after the bowl game after everything was said and done um, just because James Franklin didn't have a track record of firing uh, his offensive coordinators before the season's end in the past Um, John Donovan was fired after final regular season game same with Kirk Shiraka Um, so that was my initial reaction but you know the more I thought about it the more it kind of made sense I mean you can't just keep let it, letting this happen, you know, the offense is stalling in big games. Um, and, you know, Franklin kind of admitted it. Like, he basically said, you know, once I think something, it's kind of hard to fake it. So with that in mind, I think it kind of makes sense just because it really now sends the message that change has to happen now. It's like there, James Franklin isn't he, – he didn't tolerate – poor performance anyway but it's really like you can't you can't you know flake against Ohio State and Michigan um but yeah those are my initial reactions yeah I think it was it was interesting right because we talked after Saturday's game with Franklin and and you know when you kind of look back at it after the firing maybe there was some foreshadowing there Uh, when he talked about play calling and getting Drew Aller in a rhythm or lack thereof, um, you know, I think that kind of maybe led to to Yersich's, you know, ultimate um, firing there and his fate. But what James on Monday said something that I thought was pretty interesting um, about play calling. It was basically a follow up to the question that he had that he had answered on Saturday night um, about you know getting Drew Aller into rhythm, throwing, calling easy plays for him to do something more. Um, and he said that, that he had, you know, James had kind of put those, those plays in motion and they weren't necessarily followed through. Um, either they weren't called or they weren't executed when they were. That seems a little jumbled to me. Um, what ex- like who exactly is to blame? Is it, is it a James Franklin thing? Like why isn't he calling the plays if he's the head man? Is it a Mike Yersich thing for maybe not calling those plays or positioning his team in the right way to execute them, or is it is it on the players ultimately? Like I'm I'm not sure. I was wondering what you think about that. I I think first and foremost, it's probably on Mike Yersich. James Franklin did say he's on Wednesday that he's ultimately responsible for everything, but he also said he likes his position coaches and coordinators to be the head coach essentially of the offense or of the defense. So Mike Yersich was expected to be the head coach of the offense. He was obviously probably calling most of the plays. Um, And, you know, maybe the players didn't execute as they should have. Uh, But I think, you know, kind of going back to your point of what Franklin said on Saturday after the game, I don't think Franklin kind of sees it as the player's fault. I think he kind of sees it as a a play-calling issue um, rather than an execution issue. Now that Penn State has had plays where they were open and Drew Allers missed them or you know they I feel like a common saying has been they've had it drawn up right but then they couldn't execute against the coverage they wanted or something like that but ultimately I think Mike Yersich is to blame just because he's you know supposed to be the head coach of the offense. Yeah, I mean that was kind of James's whole thing after practice on Wednesday, right? Was um, obviously taking the blame for it, but kind of explaining the dynamic, um, and that dynamic is now all shifted around where there are a number of different 
kind of yeah. legs to that that offensive unit now. You know, it's going to be um, tight ends coach Ty Howell. It's going to be um, running backs coach Jay Wan Sider are going to kind of be handling it um, as far as play calling goes. And um, he mentioned Rob Smith, um, who's an offensive analyst. He's going to be up in the box doing some stuff. And Danny, Danny O'Brien. O'Brien, yeah, and then Danny O'Brien's now going to be, you know, leading the quarterback. So everything's kind of getting shifted around. Um, but I do think that it helps. Um, James has a pretty, you know, substantial history and resume when it comes to being a quarterback's coach or a wide receiver's coach yeah. or an offensive coordinator where, you know, even when you're in the interim phase that they are right now, I think um, James is able to kind of lead that ship. And I don't know if we're going to see some play calling from him, um, at least more than maybe we've seen in the past. But I think that's possible for Saturday. Yeah. Moving on. Um, I don't know if you saw this, but Audrey Snyder from The Athletic um, dropped an article today. It was an interview with Penn State's most recent um, recruit, um, their commit uh, quarterback, Beckham Kritza, who's from Colorado. And he was actually at the game on Saturday. And he committed on, I believe, Monday. And, you know, this is, this is a quote that he gave Audrey. Um, he said, before the game, I told Coach Franklin I was committing. He hinted to it. He kind of told me that Coach Yursich wasn't going to be there. When I heard that, obviously, I love Coach Yursich. He's a great coach, but I told Coach Franklin I committed to him and his program. So I'm seeing that, and I'm like, whoa. Wait, was this, was this a decision that was maybe in the works before, before the weekend even began? Like, was there a chance that... You know, Yersich was going to be fired either way if if they won, if they if they beat Michigan or not. Like, what what was your takeaway from that? I mean, it's it's probably purely speculation, but I I feel like, you know, reading that, hearing that again from you today, it, it kind of seems like it was make or break for against Michigan. It was either um, J- James obviously already had his doubts about Mike Yersich if he's telling a recruit that. Um, you know, before it even happens. Um, but at the same time, it's kind of, it would have been hard to fire him if Penn State had gone out there and, you know, th- thrown the ball all over the field, had a, su- had a successful day on the ground. I, I just don't see how you can, you know, have the big game that the teams wanted, that James has wanted, that the fans have wanted, and then you still fire Mike Yersich after that because that, that also, I mean, if Penn State had won that Michigan game, they're looking at a Big Ten championship appearance potentially, a college football playoff appearance, and I, I, I don't think you can fire him if you win that game and just, you know, have Jaywan Sider and Ty Howe who haven't called plays before. Um, Jaywan has been the co-offensive coordinator. Um just step in with you know a Big Ten championship maybe in the mix there um so I I mean but if that's the case I also don't know why he he would tell a recruit that or or hint to that being a possibility um but yeah I I think overall just Michigan was the final straw for Mike Yersich and you know once again Penn State's offense was lackluster in a big game and you know it just made sense to fire him at that point i suspect that that the plan was to fire mike yersich at season's end yeah so when they bring in these offensive recruits um they're being you know transparent with them and coach yersich like like kritza said um was not in the room like it was Danny O'Brien, it was it was James Franklin, and it was not Mike Yersich in there, um, and I think that was a signal of the change for when this kid steps on campus. Um, just know, you know, this isn't going to be your offensive unit. is It's not going to be with this guy. Um, so don't commit to us thinking that that he's going to be here. Um, I think that maybe the Michigan game escalated things, um, but I think that maybe there was. Um, the possibility yes. for a change at season's end, uh, no matter what. Um, yeah, I because it went further than Ohio State and Michigan. You know, it was a problem with explosiveness, um, especially. I mean, Penn State was one of the least explosive teams in the country. Um, 
and uh, you know they don't want to waste away Drew Eller's talent. Have you heard of the Office of Student Legal Services? They're here to protect your rights, provide legal guidance, and educate you about legal issues. Need consultations, document preparation, or notary services? They've got you covered. From rental agreements to personal legal issues, you can go to them for legal advice. The best part is that it's covered by the student initiated fee, available to most university park and Commonwealth campus students from their office in State College, Pennsylvania. Stay informed and empowered with the Office of Student Legal Services at Penn State, dedicated to your legal well-being. Um, moving forward, Why not? Um, Beckham Kritza, the latest commit. He's from Colorado. Like I mentioned before, he's from Boulder. And he knows a guy by the name of Sean Lewis pretty well, who's the offensive, co-offensive coordinator at Colorado right now. He was actually demoted by Deion Sanders a couple, couple weeks ago. Um, five-year head coach at Kent State. You know, there's some bad blood right now over there in, in Boulder. Um, that is a guy, to me, that makes a lot of sense for Penn State. When I'm looking at candidates, I'm looking at Sean Lewis, and I'm, I'm saying this is a guy that makes the most sense right now. Yeah, and, and I mean, you know, he, he might have been demoted, but if you look at Colorado's offense, this is a team that what won like one game last season, two games, and now – you know, they've had better talent. I, I don't think their O-line's that great, which might be, you know, he won't have that much trouble if he got hired at Penn State. But they, their offensive output in some of these big games has been crazy. Like, Shador Sanders has thrown for 400 yards I don't know how many times. He was leading the country in passing yards early in the season. You know, their their running game has, has been good at times. I, they don't run the ball that much. Um but when they have, it's it's been great. I mean, I think in terms of explosiveness, he, he would be one of the candidates that would be at top of the list. Um, obviously, I think other ones, you know, depending on how Jaywan Sider and Ty Howell do, they might be promoted just in-house. Um, but I think names outside of the program on top of Sean Lewis, I think you could go to Cliff Kingsbury. I mean, that's a very, very outside shot. They'd have to throw a bag at him but he's proven to be a very good offensive coach coach in the NFL um Joe Brady I mean he he was a name that probably was higher on that list but you know then the Bills fired their offensive coordinator and now he's their interim offensive coordinator um so I I think there's a few candidates that we know of that are open for that job obviously there's there might be some names that we don't even know that could just pop up if, you know, further down the hiring process. Yeah, I'm going to go out on a limb and say they are not going to hire Cliff, Kling Cliff Kingsbury. No. Uh, that's just not going to happen. I mean, he's one of the most successful coaches when it comes to developing quarterbacks, but that is just – yeah, uh, that's, that's too outside the box. That was my uh, yeah. my home run fluke miracle Yeah, it's not, it's not going to happen. Um, Joe Brady's outside the box, in my opinion – um, this is a guy, like you said, I mean, he's an interim offensive coordinator right now. Penn State's going to try to hire a guy um, that isn't coaching through December. Um, so Sean Lewis makes sense um, in that regard. Uh, Joe Moorhead at Akron could make sense in that regard. This was a guy that, you know, saw a lot of success at Penn State in 2016 and 2017. Hasn't found the same success as a head coach. He was okay at Mississippi State. It's been terrible at Akron. Um, they're, you know, two wins right now. He had two wins last year. Um, Moorhead is a great guy. He knows Franklin's system. They found success together. They get along. Um, and an underrated aspect of Moorhead, too, is the fact that he was an OC at Oregon for a couple of years. Um, Oregon's obviously coming to the Big Ten next year, and he had to game plan for other Pac-12 teams that are coming to the Big Ten next year. Um, so he brings that to the table. Um, he understands the SEC, so if you're, you know, in a potential playoff game um, where you're matched up with, with some of those, you know, SEC teams, Moorhead brings that as well. Um, you know, he makes a little bit of sense, but I think Penn State's going to want to try to get this done pretty quickly, um, okay. similar to how they did it with Manny with Manny Diaz, um, which happened really quickly because I think Penn State had a whole list of people, and then all of a sudden Miami fired him and. 
he was available. So that could happen again. Yeah. You know, that could happen again. There will you know, there's a lot of firings going on. I think last weekend kind of kickstarted things, but you know, we never know what can happen this week. Um, but as of right now, I do think that Sean Lewis and Joe Moorhead um, make the most sense at this point, um, especially because they should be available um, as soon as they need. Um, moving forward, Penn State is playing on Saturday. Believe it's, it or not, yeah, it's they, not just they are playing a game. Um, it's similar like last week. It was the news was far greater than the game itself. Uh, but Rutgers is coming to down. This is a competitive Rutgers team. It's a Rutgers team that's going to a bowl game. Um, what do you make of them? What, what do you make of this Penn State team after this crazy week? I mean, this might be the best Rutgers ge- or team since 2010, like the turn of the 2010s. I, I don't know if they've had six wins in a season for a while. Like it's been yeah, a while. It's been since 2014. It's been, it's been a long, long time, and then. Now, all of a sudden, this season, they're already bowl eligible. They have a top 20 defense in points allowed, yards allowed, passing yards allowed, um, fewest in all those statistics. This is not, you know, as free of a win um, as as it has been in the past. Obviously, Rutgers hasn't beat Penn State since the 80s, um, and they've had some better teams since then. But, you know, we saw after Ohio State— Penn State just, you know, looked hung over um, against a th- currently three and seven Indiana team. That's a lot worse than Rutgers, um, and that came down to the wire. And then, you know, you have a similar situation where Penn State loses a big game, and then they have to get over it. But then you also add their, you know, their whole offensive staff has been just flipped on its head. Um, Drew obviously, and the rest of the quarterbacks um, have had to, you know, get used to working with Danny O'Brien more, having James Franklin more involved in their meetings. Um, so, it, you know, it's, it's a weird week. Um, I, I could see Penn State coming out on either end. Either they could be, you know, fired up, something to prove, like, hey, we lost our offensive coordinator, but, you know, we could still put points on the board. Or it's just going to be that same thing where it's you lose a big game, especially now considering their playoff chances are eliminated. Um, you know, I think after Ohio State, they had kind of held on to the hope that they'd beat Michigan and continue to be where they wanted to be, as a lot of them said after that game. But now that's out the window, too. They're fighting for a New Year's Six, um, so there's still that to play for. Obviously, they don't want to lose, but... It could just, you know, end up on either side. But, I mean, I I personally feel like it's going to be more towards the negative side of things. I, I just find it hard to believe you can lose a big game, get eliminated from the playoffs, have a total offensive coaching staff switch, and then still come out and look like your normal self. Um, you know, it's just hard for me to believe, especially against – you know, like I said, a better Rutgers team. So I, I think it's going to be a close game. Close yeah, my, my, game. my question is just how much worse could it get offensively? Like, yeah. Is it like they were they were I mean, pretty bad? I mean, it's, it's – it's, it's, I can't look at points per game as my metric um, when I'm looking at Penn State's offense. I mean, this is an offense that clearly was benefit – benefited from a dominant defense that would put them relatively close to midfield for, um, you know, great portions of, of its first 10 games. Um, but this is not an offense that has shown that they can play the full length of a field at all. Um, so how much worse could it get without Mike Yersich? Like, I don't, I don't think that it, that it could get, uh, you know, much worse yeah, than it has. When I, when I said the positive end, I think that's just, normal i think that's yeah which isn't good yeah i don't know i just think when i'm going when i'm looking at this game um i do see a competitive Rutgers team it's a good defense um it's a great rushing attack um they're running back kyle manungai um unbeknownst to i think a lot of people actually leads the big 10 in rushing like the Rutgers is one of the most successful rushing teams um in the conference this year but penn state is you know one of the best run defenses in the country 
Um, and, you know, far and away, they've been the best in the Big Ten this year. Um, so I think that that matchup is good. I think that works. And I don't think Rutgers' passing game is very good at all. Um, to that point, I do think that Penn State handles this the way they have every other game except for the Ohio State and Michigan games, where the defense goes out, they're generational, they make it work, they give the offense opportunities, and because of that, the offense is naturally able to score. Um, and I just, I just don't see this being, I don't see this being that close. You know, I don't think that, um, you know, maybe they come out with a chip on their shoulder, and you know, the offense, you know, shows some stuff similar to how they did at Maryland. But like, I just don't think it could get much worse than it did with Mike Yersich. Um So that's that's basically my. Yeah. So what then? What's what, what's your final score prediction? Yeah. So I got. I mean, I mean, the spread is twenty and a half, which is pretty pretty wide, um, especially considering this is an offense without their offensive coordinator. But that being said, you know, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna I'm gonna take Penn State there um, and go Penn State 35, Rutgers 10. So that's gonna be a 25 point spread. Um, I I just you know, like I said, I just I don't see this being that close at all. Um, yeah. Especially considering. For, for a lot of players on this team, this is going to be their last game at Beaver Stadium. Um, you know, a lot of, you know, Chop Robinson, potentially, you know, maybe Caitlin King. Um, Keandre, maybe. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see about that. Uh, but some of these other veteran seniors who, you know, their their eligibility is up. You know, this is one final shot at home um, to uh, kind of boost your stock here. Yeah, I'm I'm agree with you that Penn State's going to win. I think it will be a close game, though. I'm going Penn State 24, Rutgers 14. Um, I don't think Penn State's defense is going to give up those huge plays like they did against Indiana that kind of kept them in it. Um, I just have trouble seeing Penn State's offense doing a lot, considering they weren't already, they weren't that great already, and then you have two new play callers now that are going to be calling the game um but then again i can see your point it is Rutgers at the end of the day there are certain programs i feel like penn state just has their number maryland being one of them um but yeah i in my opinion i just think this one's going to be close gotcha all right well that's going to do it for us um both taking penn state here um varying opinions on how it's going to go but margin, yeah um you know, this is this is our senior day too. Yeah, so uh, looking forward to that on Saturday. Um, you know, one last time in the box this year. Um, you know, that's going to do it for us. Want to know Pod? Um, another thank you to our sponsor, Student Affairs. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it. Take care.